Hello, I am Sunita. Welcome to my class. Here I am going to discuss JPSTR science topics according to the syllabus. Here the topic is current electricity. In this one, we will study about electric current, drift velocity, effect of temperature on resistivity and resistance, color coding of resistor and also Ohm's law. Let us discuss here electric current, rate of flow of electric charge, we will call it as a electric current, rate of flow of electric charge. The flow of electric charge is nothing but electric current. Then average current is nothing but I average it will be equal to delta Q divided by delta T. Q means charge, T means time. At a given interval of time, how much amount of electric charge it will flow? It is nothing but average current. In other words, average current it will be equal to Ne divided by T. E means electron. Ne means n number of electrons if they pass in a given interval of time t then si unit of average current it will be si unit of electron is coulomb H si unit of time is second therefore si unit of average current is ampere then next one instantaneous current i instant it will be equal to dq divided by dt d it will it will represent small small amount of charge tt is small amount of time then if you consider the integral integral of tq it will be equal to integral of i dt integral it will indicate the sum of all small amount of charges then you can represent this one in terms of a q that is the net charge it will be equal to you have to consider the time intervals t1 t2 consider as a time interval t1 t2 integral i dt let us consider a graph here i t curve i t graph x axis will be time y axis will be i then here this area consider this is the type of the graph then this is nothing but area area it will indicate integral of i dt it will be equal to q then in this type of graph the area it will represent the amount of charge it will flows in a particular interval of time then direction of electric current is along the direction of flow of positive charge normally the direction of current we will consider as the direction of flow of positive charge then here direction of current is always opposite to the direction of flow of electrons let us consider drift velocity in a conductor when you applied an external electric field inside a conductor the electron they will start moving with very slow velocity that velocity we will call it as a drift velocity because of the difference in potential difference the electrons they will start moving with very low velocity that velocity we will call it as a drift velocity let us consider in detail first one metals have a large number of free electrons 10 to the power of 28 free electron per meter cube this one we will call it as a free electron density consider for example consider a 1 meter cube volume of a copper then inside the copper the number of free electrons it will vary from 10 to the power of 28 to 29 per meter cube this is nothing but n number of free electron this one we will call it as a free electron density second point in the absence of an any electric field the free electrons move randomly due to their thermal energy you know the electrons they are having their thermal energy because of their thermal energy in the absence of an electric field they will start moving in all the direction randomly Third one, the average thermal velocity of all the electrons is zero since different electrons move in different direction. In the absence of an external electric field, because of the thermal velocity, the electrons, they will start moving randomly in all the direction. There is no, the electrons, they will not move in only one direction. They will move in all the direction. 
therefore average thermal velocity it will be zero mu average thermal velocity it will be zero thus there is no net motion of an electrons in any particular direction in the absence of an electric field in the absence of an electric field there is no motion net motion of an electrons in one particular direction because in the absence of an electric field the electrons they will move in all the direction they will not follow a one particular direction therefore there is no net motion of an electron let us consider fifth point and applying in external field by connecting a battery each electron experiences an electric force in the direction opposite to the applied field with the help of a battery if you create an external electric field inside a conductor the electrons they will experience an electric force in the direction opposite to the applied field because of this force the electron they will start moving opposite to the direction of an opposite to the direction of an flow of an electric field this is given by that force is given by f is equal to q into e it will be equal to small e into e then this electron they will acquire they will acquire a force because of this external electric field then this electron it will move with very high velocity or increasing velocity therefore that electron we can call it as a that electron it gets accelerated the acceleration of an electron is given by a it will be equal to f divided by m substitute the value of f here f it will be equal to small e into capital e divided by m this is nothing but acceleration of an electron next point seventh one as the electron accelerates they frequently collide with positive metal ion or other electrons and stop momentarily on each when electron released from any metal then it will create a positive metal ion when this electron when they will get accelerated then they will move with very high speed when they are moving it will collide with a positive metal ion or the other electrons then velocity of that accelerated electron it will become decreased electron do, do not move with increasing speed the speed of the electrons it will get reduced because of the collision with other metal ion or other electrons eighth one the acceleration occurs only for a short interval of time between two collisions and provides a small velocity to electron in a direction opposite to the electric field consider two collisions here when this electron when it get accelerated then it will moves with a certain distance with very high speed when it will collide with any uh, collide with any positive metal ion then the velocity of that accelerated electron it will become small it will become get reduced therefore the average small speed of the electron we will call it as a drift velocity because of this collision the velocity of that accelerated electrons it will become reduced that velocity we will call it as a drift velocity it is indicated by v d approximately its velocity its value is 10 to the power of minus 4 meter per second expression for drift velocity consider two successive collision here this is collision first this is collision second the time between the two successive collision we will call it as a tau it is nothing but relaxation time then e is the this is the direction of an electron when you applied an electric field then this electron it will acquire a force force it will be equal to small e into capital e because of this force the electron it will start moving opposite to the direction of an electric field therefore expression for drift velocity vd it will be equal to acceleration into tau when this electron when, when it will acquire a force then it will get accelerated with higher velocity then this is tau then acceleration you know the formula acceleration e small e capital e divided by m into tau then vd it will be equal to small e capital e divided by m into tau then here consider a conductor 
having a length L. Then E is the electric field across the conductor. Then V is the voltage applied across the conductor. Otherwise, potential difference across the conductor. Then this is the direction of an electron. When you applied an, when you applied an electric field, this electron it will acquires an acceleration and it will moves with a velocity. Then V D drift velocity it will be given by then here v it will be equal to e into l l is the length of the conductor v is the potential potential difference across the conductor vd it will be equal to e v divided by m l into tau in case of e replace v divided by l substitute in this equation this in this one then you will get the final drift velocity vd it will be equal to small e v divided by ml into tau energy gained by electron between two collisions consider two colli collisions here consecutive collisions here then this is collision one this is collision two this is the direction of motion of an electron this lambda it will indicate free path the distance between the two collision we will call it as a free path then tau is the relaxation time relaxation time is the time between the two consecutive collisions then energy gain it is given by work q into delta v delta v is the potential difference across the two collision then the, this E it will represent electric field then this lambda is the free path then this is the direction of an electron then potential difference across the two collision it will be given by delta V it will be equal to E into lambda substitute this value in this equation the energy gain it will be equal to Q E into lambda this is the formula energy gained by electron between the two collisions this much energy it will gain when the electron when it is moving from one collision to another collision electron mobility it is indicated by mu electro electrical mobility is the ability of a charged particles to move through a medium in response to an electric field that is pulling them consider this is the direction of an electric field then here this is the electron then this electron it will move opposite to the direction of an electric field then electron mobility is nothing but how much speed the electron it will move in an electric field it is given by electron mobility it is given by the formula mu it will be equal to drift velocity divided by electric field mu it will be equal to vd divided by e electron mobility means you have to remember in how much speed in what speed the electron it will move in a move in a metal with the application of an electric field electrical resistance resistance is nothing but a opposing force electrical resistance is nothing but opposing the flow of an electric current the resistance of a conductor is defined as the ratio of potential difference across the ends of a conductor to the current flowing through the conductor resistance is given by it is the ratio of potential difference across the conductor and to the current flowing through the conductor v by i but here one thing you have to remember this resistance do not depends upon potential difference and electric current this is the conductor this i this is the flow of an electric current this v it will indicate the potential difference across the conductor then this is the battery then you have to remember here r depends upon the resistance it depends upon the shape and size of the conductor and second one property of the conductor according to the formula resistant resistant do not depends upon the potential difference and electric current but you have to remember here resistant depends upon the shape size of a conductor and property of a material then next one unit of resistance is nothing is equal to SI unit of volt is volt then SI unit of current is ampere volt per ampere it will it is given by ohm 
ohm e the ohm e is the si unit of electrical resistance then consider these two graph according to the graph electrical resistance is the is given by slope of v versus i curve here the graph in this graph the x axis will be i in the y axis will be v consider the first graph here then you are getting a straight line passing through the origin this it will indicate the value of v and i they will be varying constantly otherwise the ratio between v by i it will be constant then here slope it will be given by tan theta then delta v divided by delta i it will gives r resistance in this case the resistance it will be constant looking at the graph only you can conclude this graph it is it will be passing through the origin then it is the straight line passing through the origin it will indicate the ratio of v by i it will be constant then here in the second graph you can conclude the value value of v by i it will be varying it will be not a constant then according to this graph so slope it will be equal to tan theta it will be equal to dv divided by di then this it will be equal to r in this case the r it will be not a constant it will be variable from this graph from these two graph you can conclude that r may be constant or may be variable in the in some cases let us discuss the expression for electrical resistance in terms of charge density and relaxation time then resistance it will be equal to v by i then it will be equal to v divided by vd e n a vd is nothing but drift velocity substitute the value of drift velocity vd it will be equal to a into tau in this in this formula or it will be equal to v divided by a tau e n a then you know a is acceleration acceleration it will be equal to force divided by mass force it will be equal to small e capital e divided by m then you know v it will be equal to el then e it will be equal to v by l substitute this value in this equation or formula then you will get ev divided by ml then substitute this acceleration value in this formula then v divided by ev divided by ml tau e n a v v get cancel then e e it will become e square here then r it will be equal to ml divided by n e square tau a you have to remember only you have to remember only this formula resistance it will be equal to ml divided by n e square tau a this uh, formula is very very important in the exam they will ask the problems based on the resistance let us learn resistivity or specific resistance you know resistance r it will be equal to ml divided by n e square tau a rho it is nothing but resistivity or specific resistance rho it will be equal to m divided by n e square tau substitute this one in place of this whole unit then r resistance it will be equal to rho into l by a then here if you want to define resistivity two important thing you have to consider length it should be 1 meter then area it should be 1 meter square in that particular case specific resistance it will be equal to resistance rho it will be equal to r a resistance that resistance we will call it as a resistivity or specific resistance then resistivity is the resistance of a wire of a material of unit length and unit area then resistivity is nothing but resistance of a wire of a material of unit length and unit area then this specific resistance rho it will be equal to m divided by n e square tau then m is the mass of an electron here then n is the number of electrons per volume tau is the relaxation time then resistivity depends upon material and temperature 
this point is very very important specific resistance it depends only on the material and also temperature what we learned up to here next one let us discuss effect of temperature on resistivity and resistance effect of temperature it will be same on resistance and resistivity let us discuss in detail here let us discuss effect of temperature on n free electron density and tau average relaxation time let us discuss effect of temperature on n or free electron density on increasing temperature more ionization of electron takes place as the electrons they will get ionized more fastly as ionization increases number of free electrons also in it will be increases automatically the n increases n is nothing but number of free electrons per volume also it will be increases then let us discuss effect of temperature on relaxation time what is mean by relaxation time time between the two successive collision we will call it as a relaxation time as temperature increases thermal speed of free electrons increases the speed of the electrons increases otherwise drift velocity of the electron increases then free electrons collide more frequently as the velocity increases the electrons they will collide more frequently more fastly therefore time between the two collision decrease decreases therefore relaxation time otherwise the time between the two successive collision it will be decreases as the electrons they are moving very fastly therefore tau it will be decreases relaxation time it will be decreases these are the main effect on free electron density and relaxation time when you increase the temperature then number of electrons free electrons it will be increases then the relaxation time it will be decreases let us discuss the effect of increasing temperature on n free electron density and tau average relaxation time in the case of in the case of metallic conductors and conductors for metals the number of free electrons per unit volume n is very large about 10 to the power of 28 to 29 per meter cube at room temperature already in metals it contains a more number of free electrons therefore free electrons per unit volume it will be very high it will be 10 to the power of 28 to 29 per meter cube at room temperature when you increase the temperature then number of free electrons it will be increases but that is not significant because already the metallic conduct conductors it contains huge number of otherwise very large number of free electrons on increasing temperature only few percentage of n number of free electrons it will be increases but that is not significant we can't consider that one increasing will be very small therefore as increasing temperature number of free electrons it will be increases but that one we will not consider as a significant but here one thing you have to remember here on increasing temperature thermal velocity of the free electrons it will be increases then the free electrons they will move very fastly then the drift velocity of the electrons it will be increases then the collision between the electrons it will be increases therefore relax relaxation time between the two collision it will be decreases you know the formula resistance it will be equal to ml divided by ne square tau a as the tau relaxation time it is if it is decreases then resistance of the conductor it will be increases because both they will be inversely proportional to each other therefore on increasing temperature number of free electrons it will be increases but that is not significant we will not consider that one but relaxation time it will be decreases as the relax relaxation time decreases then the resistivity or resistance it will be increases because the resistivity is nothing but m divided by ne square tau this one is the resistivity therefore resistivity is increases if you increase the resistance 
Then here consider for example, consider a plot of resistivity uh, and temperature. Consider it the, uh, consider the graph between resistivity and temperature. Then you can observe as the as the temperature increases, then resistivity also it will be increases. This is an example of a copper. Then here consider a case of another metal, gold, copper, silver. Then you will get the graph like this. Then in this graph it will indicate as the temperature increases, resistivity of the respective metal also it will be increases. Let us discuss the effect of temperature in the case of semiconductor and insulator. For semiconductors like silicon, germanium, sometimes carbon and insulator, the relaxation time tau does not vary much with temperature. As the temperature increases, the tau it will not vary so much. It will be decreases but, but this decreasing is not significant. Decreasing of relaxation time it will be very very less. But in the another, another way, as the temperature increases, the number of free electrons, otherwise free electron density, it will be increases. Increasing number of free electrons, it will be very, very high. Therefore, in this case, N we will consider as a significant. You know the formula resistance, it will be equal to ML divided by Ne square tau A. As the N increases, then resistance, it will be decreases because both they are inversely proportional to each other. As resistance decreases, you know, resistivity also, resistivity also automatically it will be decreases. Let us consider the graph between resistivity versus temperature. As the temperature increases, resistivity of the given materials also it will be decreases. This is an example in the case of carbon, semiconductors and also insulator. From this you can conclude as the temperature increases in the case of semiconductor and insulator, resistivity decreases and resistance also it will be decreases. Now let us discuss the effect of temperature for alloys like nichrome, manganese and con constantin. What is mean by alloy? Alloy you will get by combining metals and metals metals and non-metals then in simple words alloy is nothing but a combination of metal and metal and metal and non-metal in the case of an alloys as the temperature increases then resistivity and resistance you will observe a small change as the temperature increases resistance and resistivity slightly it will be increases in the case of a alloy let us confirm this one from the graph. Let us plot a graph between resistivity versus temperature. As the temperature increases, you can observe here resistivity slightly it will be increases. Therefore, you can conclude from this graph for alloys like nichrome, manganese, constantin as the temperature increases resistivity and resistance slightly it will be increases. Let us discuss in detail color coding of a resistor. Here consider an example of a carbon resistor. Normally the resistor it contains four bands. Each band it will give the valuable information. First band it is indicated by way A it will give the value. Second band it is indicated by B it will, it will also give the value third band it is indicated by C it will gives the order or multiplier fourth band it is indicated by D it will gives the tolerance and percentage of error then let us consider the color and its coding numbers I will tell shortcut to remember the colors BB ROI means Roy BB Roy Great Britain very good wife B.B. Roy is a person, he is from Great Britain, he is having very good wife, like this wife, like this wise you can remember the colors. B.B. Roy, Great Britain, very good wife. Then here B, it will represent black, then its coding number is 0 or coding value is 0. Second B, it will represent brown, its value is 1. Here you will get confused between B 
first always write the dark color second one write the light color black is dark compared to brown then r means red here you will not get confused its value is 2 o means orange its coding value is 3 y means yellow its coding its coding value is 4 g means gray green its value is 5 b means blue its value is 6 v means violet its value is 7 g means gray first g you have to write green second g you have to write gray because this one is dull color compared to green gray remember like that its value is 8 w means white its value is 9 then here consider the three bands here a b c here if all the three three bands are black color then its value is 0 0 c always we will represent in terms of a order therefore 10 to the power of 0 if the second second case if all the three three bands are brown color then 1 1 10 to the power of 1 then third case if all the three bands are red color then its value is 2 2 then band c is 10 to the power of 2 then here fourth band d we can observe three cases here one is gold silver no color for the value of gold is plus or minus 5 percentage this it will gives the error for silver plus or minus 10 percentage for no color plus or minus 20 percentage now let us discuss otherwise let us find the color coding of this carbon resistor here you are having four different band first band its color is yellow its coding number is for yellow its coding number is 4 therefore write 4 here first then second band second band is approximately it is it is near to violet its value is 7 therefore 4 7 into third band is red its value is 2 always remember third band we will represent in terms of a order or 10 to the power of 47 into 10 to the power of square then last band band d it this one is silver color therefore plus or minus 10 percentage plus or minus 10 percentage in this way you can write first one is yellow its coding is 4 second one is violet its coding is 7 then third band is red this one we have to write in terms of order into 10 to the power of square then fourth one is silver it will gives the error plus or minus 10 percentage then this one you can write in another way also then 47 into 10 to the power of square 47 10 to the power of square means two zeros therefore 4700 plus or minus 10 percentage of 4700 is nothing but 470 therefore final value is 4700 plus or minus 470 this in this way you can find the color coding of a given resistor ohm's law statement the electric current in any conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across the end of the conductor provided temperature pressure pressure and all other physical condition remain constant i is directly proportional to delta v this is the condition of a ohm's law then here consider a conductor if you connect a conductor with the help of the battery this battery it will it will provide a potential difference across the ends of the conductor when current flow inside the conductor how much amount of current it will flow inside the conductor directly it will depends upon the potential difference across the ends of the conductor therefore i is current is directly proportional to potential difference across the end of the conductor i is directly proportional to delta v here they are given the condition condition provided temperature pressure and other physical condition remain constant this one this one is nothing but ohm's law this one is very very important this law you have to remember next one ohmic conductors ohmic conductors means it has to obey the ohm's law 
first one it has to obey the ohms law delta v is directly proportional to i the graph for delta v versus i is a straight line passing through the origin as shown let us consider the graph we have to plot a graph between delta v versus i then here you will get a straight line passing through the origin if you get a graph like this then it will indicate it will obey the ohms law that is very very important you have to remember remember the type of the graph otherwise shape of the graph then resistance r is independent of current i or is not depends upon the current i or is independent of current or is or resistance it will be constant then practical examples are metallic conductors like copper silver for small current this point is very very important metallic conductors conductors they will behave as a ohmic conductors for small current electrolyte copper sulfate solution with copper electrodes these are the three condition if if they follow these condition then that conductors it will behave as a ohmic conductors let us consider next one non ohmic conductors first point do not obey ohms law non ohmic conductors they will not obey the ohms law their delta v versus i graph can be of various types let us a study with an example here discharge tube and vacuum tube here if you plot a graph between delta v versus i you will get a curve like this this curve it will be, it will not pass through the origin the shape of the curve it will be changes at different intervals of current therefore this one it will not obey the ohms law then second example water voltmeter here this line here you are getting a straight line but but this straight line it is not passing through the origin it is shifted next to origin otherwise shifted some place from the origin this one also it will not obey the ohms law then third example pn junction or diode here you will get a curve like this this one also it will not obey the ohms law then next example metallic conductor at high current metallic conductor at low current it will behaves as a ohmic conductors up to here you are getting a line passing through the origin but after when it is increasing the current at very high current at this point the curve it will start bending this part it will behave it will start behaving as a non ohmic behavior here you have to remember metallic conductor at high current it will behaves as a non ohmic behavior but metallic conductor at very otherwise low current it will behaves as a ohmic conductor that point is very very important that one you have to remember then next one resistance r is not constant depends upon the current i resistance is not constant always it will depends upon the current these are the main three conditions to decide whether the conductor is non ohmic conductors thanks for listening my class send me your valuable feedback